Akro traveled to the future after he and Sai escaped. But since Isla was still there, she must have traveled to the past afterward. Would there have been enough time to store the needed energy to go so far back? The reason she was able to go many days back was... Due to a bed sheet. When Atsuki and Shiria left the bedroom, Isla hadn't traveled to the past yet. Isla world switched when Akro went to the future. Um, possible. Wait. If I'm right, and the version of Isla who was there ended up being the friend. She likely traveled before we left the bedroom. Mm hmm. Akro traveled to the future after he and Sai escaped, but since Isla was still there, she must have traveled to the past afterward. I just love the idea of the answer of due to a bedsheet. Due to a bedsheet. You know, I mean, the, I think the reason behind the idea is that Inside of a bed sheet, the Sikkimi accumulates heat quicker. So I, I, I kind of want to go for it. When Atsuki and Shiria left the bedroom, Isla hadn't, hadn't traveled to the past yet. It's, it's, it's possible, I can't deny it. Isla world switched when Akra went to the future. That doesn't explain it. Someone took the past. That's, that's boring. I'm going for the bed sheet. Actually, yes, it was due to a bedsheet that the World C group had obtained in World A. When it was brought to World B, they wrapped it around the past Sikimea and World switched back to World C. However, the sheet remained around the Sikimea in World B. When it powered back on, the sheet was still very hot. That's why it took a short time to reach the needed amount of energy. I do remember that, by the way. I like not a lot of details about the whole scene, but I remember them putting a bedsheet around the Sikimea at some stage. When Akro and Sai escaped from the bedroom, Sai was forced to reveal the location of the future Sikimea and was immediately knocked out. Isla A was there and heard it as well. Worried, she tried to get a response from the unconscious Sai, which only one person heard from the bedroom. Giving up, she went down in an attempt to prevent Akro from damaging the Sikimea. She found it powered off in one of the Hawaii B crystal rooms. Akro was already gone. She knew the event room cabinet was equipped with temperature regulation, so she carried it there. But after that, on the floor of Hallway A, she found a sheet covering yet another Sekimeo. Confused, she felt its surface, instantly vanishing from that place with the sheet. Immediately, she found herself on November 24th. Someone else disappeared as well, Akro A. The bedroom where everyone stayed was directly above the event room, so the range reached him. From a locked bedroom, he appeared in an unlocked prison cell. That was when a policeman outside the building suddenly appeared 21 days in the past. Sai woke up. He was near the elevator, so Isla's travel had missed him and the people in the upper level of the bedroom. Disoriented, he walked to the event room and found out the others had left both Sekimea behind for him. He still had to complete his plan. To get out of the bedroom, he had to travel to the past. Once he was done, Sai had both Sekimea for himself. Eager to resolve the doubts he had, he brought them both to a room, B6. Unfortunately for him, he was only able to resolve his two major concerns before the world around him changed. When we left the bedroom, we quickly found out the third Sikimea had disappeared from Naomi's locker. Who the hell did that? There's no way it teleported out. Did anyone else have the key after all? Who took the fake Sekimea? Mm, 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 mm. Why would Atsuki? No. Why would Shiria? No. Why would Mia? No. Sai? Maybe. Akro? Maybe. Kate? I don't think so. Isla? No. Erina? No. Naomi? Who? Uh, one of these two, surely. 
Am I gonna guess the world right? There's no way whatsoever. Akro A disappeared. He was in the bedroom. Sai was knocked unconscious. Another Sai from a different world? Maybe. What about an Akro from a different world? Hmm. Yeah, you know what? We're going with Akro A. I know Akro A was capable of being in that place at that time. So I'm gonna go for it. Nice. Yes. I mean, the game basically gave me that one for free. Because it literally told me Akro A was there or thereabouts at that time. Yes, it was Akro A. You might remember he world switched while he was in the staff room and he had Naomi A's keys. While he waited in room B4, he wondered if he had access to that locker, and when he went to confirm it, he saw someone had hidden a Sekimea there. More than confused, he took it out with no comprehension that he was no longer in his own world. I wonder who it was. Maybe Sai somehow. After that, Chiri and I found a Sekimea on the floor of a Hoi B room. B6. I don't remember. Jesus. Um... Wait. Acro traveled to the past with Isla. Where did Isla find that Sekimea again? She found it in the bedsheet, in a hallway. It wasn't that one. They traveled to the future. When we touched it, I'm pretty sure we went to the future. We appeared where we'd been 10 minutes before, so we went 10 minutes to the future. We thought we'd gone to the very recent past because the footprints we just left looked recent. Since we went shortly into the future, that didn't change. And then we concluded we'd gone five minutes to the past because we thought that we'd taken the elevator and caused the trip we'd heard before traveling. This means that someone else used it from the attic after we left the bedroom. On the crystal floor, we went to the lobby because our past selves hadn't gone there. Who did we hear then, if not ourselves? There was someone moving through the hallways. We heard an indistinct sound coming from hallway A, made by a door. That's us, we just entered the event room. We waited and seconds later the same sound came from hallway B. Unmistakably a closing door had created it. Who did they hear in the hallways? Not Atsuki, not Shiria, not Mia, not Akro, not Isla, not Naomi. Sai. Sai who regained consciousness and went down to check things out. I don't know what the state of Kate and Erina was around this time. I don't remember. But Sai seems like the most logical. Which Sai? Sai A. There aren't many people I can think of. Sai, Erina, Kate, and maybe the other Shira. Exactly. That's what I that's what I said basically. I didn't think of the other Shiria, but yes. But given the movements, I might know who it was. And that Shiria. How the hell did she get there? Was she the Shiria from this morning? Did she appear in the attic with Naomi and spend the whole day in the tower? It can't be. I would have seen her. And what the hell was the deal with her clothes? Or anything that she said? She was the same Shiria I'd been with. She remembered what we'd done. That's all I get. When we returned to room B6, the Sekimea we'd used wasn't there. Since we'd gone to the future, someone had time to take it away. Instead though, we found one in a cabinet drawer. It was very hot, so it must have been there for a long time. But we decided not to activate it and brought it to its cabinet. If they had touched it though, what would have happened? It has been a while since you asked for that. I think that was a decision, wasn't it, back then, whether we touch it or not, and touching it led to an alternate ending. Atsuki would have gone many hours back in time. The lights would not have yet, not yet have turned on, and he would have found himself in the lobby. You remember, right? He spent a long time but in the staff room. Eventually, after the lights light was turned on in the morning, he was killed by Ido, who had the suitcase ready to prepare the attack. Yeah, that was... Oh, Ido! But that was the, um... 
that was the alternate event where Artsky found, like Artsky was hiding in the, yeah, in the staff room with the lockers and was eventually found by like a group of four people. Before his eyesight faded, Artsky saw four people he recognized. Yeah. Uh, ooh. Now that's interesting. Because back then I assumed Akra was definitely one of them as a member of, you know, Sin. Edo. Shirio was definitely there, okay. Oh, I, I want to go back. Um, God, where would I find that? Okay, I made a shortcut there. Well, firstly, because I thought I would sneeze and then didn't, but also I thought at that point I might as well just go find the scene. <laughs> okay, so we're back at the stage where that all happened. Atsuki hiding in the staff room, he heard the door being opened. The figure was immediately taken aback while its expression shaped into one of the fines. What the fuck are you doing? That's Ido, surely. He stopped himself when he spotted something of mass importance. The man was transporting a black suitcase. Are you going to fucking answer me? Who are you? Mm hmm. What's that suitcase for? Do you mean it's just a suitcase? How are you even here? Hmm. Can the past be changed after all? Whatever. Fuck, do you know where you're waiting for me, okay? Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Met face to face with the first person who'd see him as a killer. Yeah. The three more figures entered Atsuki's sights. In front of him, he saw four people two men, a woman, and a girl seemed all of them were looking at him. He knew all of them. He recognized their clothes, bodies, and faces. He saw the last three of them rushing to him, but his mind cut off. It cannot have been Suripo, because he doesn't recognize Suripo. He doesn't know his clothes or faces. It has to be Shiroya, Kate, and Isla. Two men, a woman, and a girl. Also, also, um, uh, okay, that would also be, well, that would not be, well, technically, she, now, Shiri is also a woman. She's old enough. So, a girl would have to be Isla. One was Shiri. She was naturally encompassed by the range when Atsuki touched the Sekimeya. However, she didn't appear in the lobby with him. Strangely, she appeared in a bathroom on the crystal floor, and when she left, she was seen from the security room and addressed through the microphone. Atsuki recognized Ido and Suripo as well. Oh, <laughs> he'd seen both of them during the long wait before the event. How the heck would I know that? I honestly, I, I think that's bullshit. Okay. I guess, yeah, sure, he could have seen him, but... Alright. The last person was Erina. There's no girl here, then. Shiri is an adult. She's a woman. That doesn't count. She had been alive in room B4 next to Atsuki and Shiri and appeared in the mechanical room. However, she had been unconscious. Therefore, despite appearing in the past, she took a while to awaken. Two impossibilities prevented this from happening. 
one was the butterfly effect. Wait, it prevented what from happening? The whole scene? What is the game talking about? I genuinely don't know what the hell the game's asking. Um, I'm gonna say Atsuki's death because I I don't even know what the question is. So I I don't even feel like there's any reason or any sense in trying to reason it out. Precisely, Atsuki died. Perhaps that problem helped you figure out the Sikimiya's mechanics. Because Atsuki died, he could never have appeared in the lobby. He wouldn't have been there in the future. However, there's something to recognize. He had a wound on his right hand, and in the darkness he saw that he had a key shaped like the one for Naomi's locker. It was Ido's instead, though. His appearing location was where he would have ended up traveling to the future in a chain of travels. Okay. That was when we found Kate dead in the security room. Who killed Kate B? Um, who would kill someone? Only Sai or Akaru would kill someone. Kate B. I think I'm going with Akaru. A. I don't really... You know what? This part was so long, I'm not going to be able to think about it logically. When Kate walked out of the bedroom, Erina followed close behind. She didn't believe Atsuki and Shiria had killed Isla. Sai and Akaro had been with her the entire time. However, Kate had been missing during that time, and he hadn't explained himself. She didn't trust him at all. He'd been lying all day. He'd faked going to the bathroom to take advantage of Isla's death. On the lowest floor, when Erina uttered his name, he turned around slowly. A single question was asked. Where were you when we couldn't find you? Kate realized the meaning behind that. Erina suspected him of causing Isla's death. He sighed quietly and then spoke. I don't know exactly. When I was walking behind Sai, I suddenly appeared in the attic. What? It's the truth. It likely happened when Shiryu and Atsuki touched the Sekimeya, remember? Why didn't you say this before? And that doesn't tell me anything. Why didn't we fight? Uh, why didn't we find you? Kate stared into Erina's eyes. Her voice had never sounded so harsh. I said I experienced a teleportation and I'm telling you the truth. I was very confused when I appeared there. When I came down, the three of you were in the lobby. Although Erina wavered, she quickly dismissed Kate's claim as nonsense. You're not even making sense. You were hiding in the storeroom, weren't you? What? No. There are cameras in hallway C. What I'm saying will be proven. I don't believe it. The cameras aren't recording. Yes, they are. Don't you see the light? Kate saw nothing but hostility in Erina's face, enough to appear as a threat. She really think he had killed Isla? He didn't know anything about what had happened to her, but there was a way he could prove his innocence. You still haven't explained anything. Why didn't you say this earlier, and why didn't we find you? Erna had no idea what to believe. No one else could have harmed Isla, but who would have? Why would anyone have done that to her daughter? Part of her wanted to abandon everything and just stop thinking altogether, placidly waiting the month it would take her daughter to return. I'm not lying. Maybe I can prove myself. Kate started walking to the security room, gesturing at Erna to come with him. It has been a long time since I've checked. Perhaps the security system is working again, just like what happened to the computer. In silence, Kate kneeled under the desk while Erina watched expectantly. Again, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with this. When he stood up, he nonchalantly took a rusty key out of his pocket and left it in a drawer. This time I won't forget to keep it somewhere safer. Kate sat on his chair and started up the free screens. As Erina stepped forward, he pressed the arch archived footage button. Oh, it's working. A list of cameras appeared on the screen. Erna read them without so much as a twitch. 
But look, I'll show you that I was telling the truth. When Kate selected one, a video of Hallway C came up, mainly focusing on the bathrooms. Frustrated, Kate used the time bar to skip ahead. Here, I'm about to disappear. Coming from hallway B, Sai stepped into C. Kate followed behind and out of nowhere, his body vanished. See, that's when I appeared in the attic. After he selected another camera and fast forwarded further, Kate appeared from the second floor and entered hallway A. Just like I said, I wasn't here when she disappeared. I have no idea what happened to her, but I didn't lie. Did you kill Naomi? Huh? Of course I didn't. Show me what happened. After a brief pause, Kate moved the cursor to a different camera. It was calm. He knew very little incriminating footage was located in those folders. When he clicked on the room B4's camera, a message appeared on the screen. 10.04, camera disabled and associated footage erased. What? The killer erased it? How? 10.04? Isn't that when we left you here? Uh, it might be, but why does that matter? The system wasn't working for me at the time. You killed Naomi, right? Oh god, she's crazy. Kate hung his head. He'd failed to remember the deletion time would be displayed. I would never kill a person. You, you did, did. Not only Naomi, right? You're wrong. I promise I didn't do anything. Kata's excuses were poor. He wasn't trying anymore. Even if he convinced Erina, he was done for, as the deletion time pointed straight at him. His mind was someplace else entirely. He couldn't let that message be seen. He'd already ended someone's life for his own sake. If, his, if he was quick, he could get himself out of there, and there were many more suspects than the first time. Kate turned around, re ready to deliver a sudden blow, but he didn't expect the one that came first. After a sharp collapse, Kate's body was on the floor, splashed with its own blood. Next to him was Erina. Kate's fist had contacted her head, and she had also fallen on top of the blood. That's why there was a blood splatter on her. Only one of them was alive. Erina suddenly awakened and saw Kati's blurry outline. She'd killed him. She remembered what had happened, however she could hardly keep herself steady. She was unable to tell how much time had passed. Seconds had suddenly cut off for her, but she had to get out of there. When she was able to stand, she walked to the door. Um, one thing I'd like to say here. There is absolutely zero chance, zero chance, Erina has the physical strength to kill Kate with one blow. Well, that's not true. She has the physical strength to kill Kate with one blow. She does not have the physical strength to injure Kate to a point where there'd be blood all over the floor. With one blow. That is just not something that's realistic in the slightest. Maybe he fell onto the desk and got a cut in his head and blood still there's no way there's enough there's no way that would bleed enough to leave a pool on the floor it's just not happening if the game said something like i don't know there was a vase there or a vase and she like threw that or like hit him with that then i could see yes but if she just hit him there is no way that scene is realistic she couldn't see anyone in the hallway, but the end was a bright blob. Suddenly, she felt the need to go somewhere. She approached the event room. Inside, a single drop of Kate's blood dripped off her. Paying it no mind, she slowly walked out through the other door. She walked in a straight line. Then, beyond the door, she saw a body beneath a curtain. She had avenged her. Naomi could at least rest in peace. Someone closed the door behind her, but she didn't hear it. Only two other people did, and they mistook it as their own action. So it was Erina, huh? Okay. I think I can imagine what happened. We then found Erina's body, but she was still alive, and after we were in the event room for a while, the other Shirio woke me up. Why the hell was she there? And why did we not find her before? Did she avoid the searches with the Sikimea, knowing all of them were coming? She really must have been the Shiria that disappeared with Naomi. We couldn't find her, but suddenly Sai attacked us. 
I don't get that either. Why did he want to kill us, and where even did he get that knife from? I thought he'd overstep, but it seems I was the one who had. What the fuck did that even mean? Before that point, he seemed to slow down when it became clear that I didn't know why he was chasing us. He snapped out of it suddenly, though. Um... Wait. He saw us, he hadn't cried, and he heard a sound when he saw the security camera. This is very late in here, isn't it? Yeah, a knife swings at me from the partitions. Uh, yeah. Hmm. It was the sound. There was a sound, wasn't there? Uh, okay. Mm hmm. He stared at my eyes with the most incensed and serious expression I'd seen on him. It has to be that then. I don't remember why he would have cried somewhere else, but like that's the only thing that makes sense. He looked pensive out of nowhere and glanced around the room. Suddenly, invisible shock, his whole body went one step backward. Oh, the secure... But that doesn't make sense. I mean, it... it totally makes sense to that that would stop him from trying to kill Atsuki but that totally doesn't make sense because that's not what happened in that scene because his his, his will to kill I guess slowed down when he looked Atsuki in, in his eyes I don't know it seems a bit strange to me earlier Sai had experienced his first world switch it was Atsuki A who he thought he'd been chasing. He realized Atsuki B didn't seem to know what had occurred, and that he hadn't cried, but it was the camera's green light that stopped him, as otherwise it would have been possible for Atsuki to be a future version of the one who'd punched him. Okay. In World A, Sai had noticed the green lights were gone. The cameras hadn't been recording. When he unwillingly returned to World B, he even saw the message on the computer that matched with the lack of green lights. However, when he saw the green lights again, he understood he'd been recorded chasing behind Atsuki and Shirio with a knife. If he killed them, he would be the culprit. Sai didn't believe that footage would see the light of the day, but he couldn't risk his own life. As a result, he abandoned all intentions to use his knife as soon as that green light entered his eyes. Sai began to think about what he'd experienced. The Sekimeya had disappeared from room B6 where Atsuki and Shirya had found one. They hadn't known yet that two existed. They thought the Sekimeya had teleported to a drawer, meaning they might have missed that the future Sekimeya was still in that room. After Sai wasn't found in hallway B, since Atsuki had just looked through every room in the hallway and hadn't found it, Sai thought he could simply go 20 minutes back and obtain it before Atsuki's inspection, like he'd planned before dashing out of the event room. But what had he experienced? Where was the Atsuki who'd been crying in the attic? Sai had seen a dead body in the lobby near a pool of blood. Shirias. Why was it not there anymore? Why had the pool of blood diminished? He didn't know, but he'd seen Shiria dead. Her fate had to be death, but Sai couldn't explain the body's disappearance yet. She would end up dead. Someone would kill Shiria. Sai just had to work out the structure of the events. He ran away and managed to hide in hallway B. I'm not sure what he did, but when he unlocked the cabinets, we spoke to him for a while. He was pretty confident that Shiria would die and that the blood in the lobby was hers. And that's when he and Shiria disappeared from the event room. I also just said that what my plan relies on. I must go back to the past, but I don't need to go too far. If I had another Sekimiya hidden, what would the point of using this one be? I would just go back to the past with the other I have, right? This is an actual question. If, as you say, I know where another Sekimiya is, why would I not simply use that one? 
because it would have sent him to the future. He wanted to go to the past, and he knew the Sekime in the cabinet was the past one. When he touched it, he and Shiryu appeared in the attic, which was inaccessible for me. I'm not sure what happened there, but Shiryu told me Sai locked her in a bedroom. On the crystal floor, I was able to open another locker. Why did I find its key in the cleaning room? Why didn't we find it before that point? It should have been noticed plenty of times when people were looking for the Sekimea. You might have realized that Akro always went out of his way to look at that room before the cart disappeared. From the staff room, I used the Sekimea and appeared 20 minutes in the past. In the event room, I used that time to search for the upper floors, but I'd locked myself out of the attic. I ended up in the security room without finding anyone, but Erina must have been somewhere, likely with Mia. Many questions were eclipsed by a much bigger one, the note that I'd found on the floor of the staff room. I touched the Sekimea and went 20 minutes to the past. Then when I returned to the staff room, I found that note. Very likely. It fell from her pocket when I sat on the floor. I never wrote it. What the fuck was it doing in my pocket? I don't believe anyone else left it on the floor. Wait, no, this doesn't even make sense. Nobody could have put it in my pocket, so what I must assume is that I appeared with it when I traveled to the past. From the staff room, I traveled and appeared in the event room. That makes sense. 40 minutes later, we were all there when Erina was about to activate the Sikimea. Oh right, I'd forgotten about this too. Still with her groggy voice, she traced my gaze up to her purse and took out a small piece of paper. I found this just now. I tried to read it, but my head hurt a lot. Do you know what it is? She handed it to me and I snatched it away, gripping it tightly. My hands started trembling as soon as I glanced at the words again and saw those familiar letters. Erina had found the note I'd thrown away. When I took it, I immediately put it in my pocket so that the others wouldn't see it. That's why I appeared with it in the event room 40 minutes earlier. However, this is ridiculous. Where's its origin? I appeared with it and I threw it away. Then Erina found it and gave it to me, which is why I appeared with it. It doesn't have a beginning. This means that I must have something backward. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. Hmm. Erina gave Atsuki a note with different contents. Erina didn't find the note where Atsuki had thrown it. Two identical notes had been written. Atsuki had the note in his pocket before he traveled to the past. Wait. Hmm. I can't quite make sense of it. I like this one the most. Two identical notes had been written. Sounds dumb to me in a way. I don't really see a way that would make sense. Asuki had the note in his pocket before he traveled to the past. Is the game saying that he just always had it there to begin with? I think didn't Sai pat him down at some stage looking for keys? I don't think that's realistic. Uh, Erina gave Atsuki a note with different contents. I don't know how that would really make much sense. Erina didn't find the note where Atsuki had thrown it. I don't know. I just like it. Hmm. I assumed Erina found the note where it discarded it, behind the handrail in hallway B. But she just said, I found this just now. If she found it somewhere else, it makes sense. She gave it to me and I gripped it tightly, which is why I appeared with it in the past and saw it roughly folded. Then I left it behind the handrail and it remained there. Maybe this is it. After all, there's only one explanation behind that note, that it came from another world. And Erin had told us what happened right before that point. She met Mia. Could Mia have had that note? Did I really write it in another world? Why was she there, and where did she go? I put my hand in my pocket, and, but the note wasn't there. It had disappeared at some point. Right, the next time I traveled to the past, I didn't appear with it. But why? I should have. Although that was what it seemed like, concluding why it had vanished was relatively simple. Oh, it's what I thought of earlier. I had the note when I traveled to the past. From the staff room, I appeared in hallway B and then slammed the storeroom door to create a new noise. After that, I waited in the bathroom on the second floor. 
There I put my hand in my pocket because I wanted to flush the note away, however it wasn't there. That's why I didn't appear with it. I wanted to flush it away, so if I had, I wouldn't have held the note in the future, so I never could have appeared with it. These details... I wonder how many I missed. Now that I think about it, something similar happened that very same trouble. When I touched the Sekimea, I had the locker key in my hand. However, later when I returned to the staff room with Shiri, I had it in my pocket. In other words, I'd appeared with it in the past, but it had been in my pocket. That's because if I'd appeared with it in my hand, I would have then put it in my pocket. That redundant action was cancelled, and I simply appeared with it already inside. In the same line, I didn't go to the bathroom many times, did I? I didn't feel the need to. Perhaps that happened due to my travels. If I'd felt that urge upon going back, I would have gone to the bathroom. Then in a replicated location that wouldn't have been needed anymore. My bladder just automatically emptied without me noticing. There certainly are mysteries I still can't solve. Maybe I can, but I'm failing to do so. Mia's existence. Chiria's. In the event room, when Erina activated the Sekimea, the world around us changed, and Sai was the only one to travel through time. Um... I would like to say he traveled to the future. I think it's more realistic. I don't know. Again. Yeah, well, I'm very good at... I, I would like, like, if someone has the time, was just very bored, go through all of the answers I've given for questions that I really just didn't know and was kind of just guessing my way through. I feel I'm having a very good accuracy with those kind of half guesses, half ideas that I've come up with. Asuki had hidden the past to Kimia in Ido's locker, so Sai went to the future. He had just been in the attic's bedroom, so he reappeared there with Shiryu. That is how he unintentionally locked himself in that room. When that happened, oh, when that happened, Shiryu was with us, but her clothes were different. She'd appeared before me when I'd cried her name. That was the real Shiryu, but what happened to her? How did she get there? Was she the Shiryu from this morning? The one who traveled to the park? Huh. Her words came back to me. She told me that she traveled to November 30th. Wait. Well, there's a major contradiction with that. The location where she appeared. Surely. The place where she stayed. The number of days she's... The location where she appeared, surely. She said that she appeared below the gem stop... Uh, the, the, the gem stop, yeah. The gem shop, but that can't be. She wouldn't have appeared... Speaking hard. She wouldn't have appeared there if she'd gone from December 15th to November 30th. That location was exactly where she was on November 30th. In other words, she would have appeared there only if she'd gone 15 days into the future. To December 30th. Could she really have gone to the future? Did that occur without her realizing it? Right, I didn't think about it earlier, but the Sekimea that sent this repeatedly to January 5th at 9pm was the one that Shiria activated in the bathroom. I couldn't know what had happened, but just the location where she'd appeared spelled it out clearly. Wait, this is why... It's why the chain of travels forward stopped on January 5th. It's gotta be. Shiria traveled to the future. She went to December 30th, then, like she told me, she entered the tower through the storeroom days later on January 5th. She didn't tell me exactly what she did, but I know she was in the mechanical room. She told me that she found the attic key there. So she was looking for something and without realizing it, she moved the future Sekimea in the mechanical room. The next time that all of us appeared, nobody instantly activated the next travel, so we stopped on the 5th. That has to be it. It's actually good reasoning. I looked at the voice recorder. 58.42. It's almost been an hour already. That meant I didn't have much time. Although it once seemed impossible, saving Mia from the explosion should be simple. Very soon, if I touch the Sekimea, I'll be sent back to a point before she died. Then I could stop it. I could change the past. That would create the world that we want. The one we thought we'd have on that day. But there's still a big problem. If I do that, I can't live in it. Two versions of myself would remain. That had previously been a theoretical problem I hadn't needed to confront. 
however, it was the truth. Although that world was attainable, it had no room for its creator. Given all I concluded though, I could think of a slight workaround. I could create that world and then leave it. If I'm right, and touching the Sekimea when both ranges overlap will send me to the other world, I could do that after saving Mia. If it worked, although I'd end up in my original world, it would have at least facilitated the best one's existence. But I don't get what's happening right now. Why was Mia in the tower? If I did what I'm thinking, I would make sure our past selves don't go to the event, as that would put them in danger again. So then, why is Mia here? And why have I not seen Shiria anywhere? That time, before 9pm, why did Shiria say that she didn't want to save Mia? It couldn't have been the real Shiria, but I can't figure out a reason. However, as I'd thought, doing what I'd proposed myself was simple. I only had to touch the Sikimea when the device displayed 65 minutes and 20 seconds. As I could plan out the loop before executing it, there was a best case scenario that had fought up. I would appear on November 24th, that's 21 days before now, and it'll be January 5th in 21 days. Basically, if I think about what I'll do on January 5th, I can plan my arrival on November 24th. This soundtrack is very good, by the way. After November 30th, once everything is done, I could touch the Sikimea to go to a previous world. There, I know I'll be able to use the Sikimea on January 5th after we break free from the chain of travels. In other words, words, <laughs> if I obtain both Sikimea on the 5th, I can appear with them on November 24th which will allow me to use them immediately after the 30th. What I can't be sure of is that doing so will bring me to the world I was in. It could send me anywhere else. If that happens though, won't it be the world where Shiria is? The Shiria who disappeared from this world earlier today. Would that be consistent? Even though I would have altered this world, would I be sent to the same place where she went? I had no idea where Shiria was but I remember the time I told her that changing the past was possible. Without a doubt, she wanted Mia to be saved, and the opportunity to accomplish it was finally real. Even with all that I'd concluded, I found myself entirely lost, merely aware that Mia's death was reversible. If touching the Sikimea doesn't send me to our world, what that might mean is that on January 5th I won't be able to have them. Then I wouldn't appear with them on November 24th, so I suppose I'll know as soon as I travel. If that happens, I'll wait. I'll have to wait until December 15th to change worlds during the incident. Was it a flawed plan? I went over it again and I didn't think so. I intended to change history, so at that time there was no option to check a note a future self of mine would leave behind to assure my success. Saving Mia was achievable. I dearly wished for that, hoped it was possible, been denied and arrived at a real chance for it. It was a surreal fault, but there was no longer a reason to doubt it. Once it was created, I would let that world continue to exist by leaving it. Would it be possible to find the Shiria I'd been with? If so, we would be able. Uh, if so, would we be able to return to our world? If we could do that, there would be nothing else to wish for. But I still can't wrap my head around Mia's existence in the tower. Does that conflict with what I'm aiming for? How was she here? If I save her. I know I'll make sure none of us go to the tower. How is it possible then that she was here all day? I don't understand it. But it shouldn't be an issue regardless. On top of that, I can't be content with just knowing that she was in the tower. I still need to act. The note I found in my pocket could have come from Mia. Erina said that she saw her minutes before we travelled to the world where she existed. That note implied only one thing, Shiria's death. If that world was this very same one I'm in and Mia came from it, could that be why I haven't seen Shiria? Is it because she's not here at all? If I'm able to appear on November 24th with both Sikimea, I'll be able to freely travel back through time just in case there's any issue that I can't foresee the first time around. I exhaled slowly, I was ready to act. Even though the structure of the universe was impossible to comprehend, I knew enough to be confident in myself. And no matter what, it would lead to a result. No matter what it was, an outcome would arise from the labyrinthine, labyrinthine mess that had formed around me. 
I can do it, can't I? I can easily appear on November 24th. It has to be that day, because it's proportional to January 5th. I don't think anyone's still in the tower right now, so the range should only affect me. The time on the screen was 62.37. I'd taken the past Sikimea out of the refrigerator as I pressed record, so I didn't have a lot of time to waste. In the past, I won't be able to stay at my house. That means that I'll need money to stay somewhere else. But that's not an issue. What I figured out earlier will help me here. In November, I could very easily obtain the money my past self has saved. However, I'd like to avoid doing that so I don't cause any issues. Instead, I can just duplicate it. I can take that money, which will allow me to have it on January 5th, then I'll appear with it on November 24th, so it won't be necessary to obtain it from my past self. Of course, to have it on January 5th, I have to not spend it. There's another way to solve this, though, by duplicating it again. My body shook with anticipation, jittering all the way down to my fingertips. I was closer to leaving the tower than I had been in what felt like eons. On January 5th, if I'm able to get the Sikimea, that will happen inside the tower around the morning, after the point I travelled to the past. Since it's currently the afternoon, I'll appear at close to midnight on the 25th. It's perfect. I stopped thinking and stepped closer to the Sikimea. 64, 47. The seconds were rapidly going up. 65. Only 20 more seconds. The aura of heat around the Sikimea had compounded immensely. My senses were honed in on the timer. I barely registered the temperature. 65, 15, 16, 17, 18. Oh. <laughs> we'll read through that too. 65, 19. That was the last number my eyes saw before my sight blackened. And that's where we leave it off for this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching. I'm glad that, like, I felt a bit bad after the last episode because I got so much, like, I didn't understand a lot of the questions that were asked and I got so much of it wrong, but I felt like in this and the previous episode, I was a lot better in sync with what the game wanted of me. Not for everything. I certainly got a bunch of stuff wrong still. And I didn't even, like, necessarily know a lot of the things that I got right. I just guessed very well. Uh, it felt a lot better still to get a lot of it right. So yeah, hope you enjoyed watching. Thanks for doing so. I'll see you guys again next time. Till then, bye.